egg and skank. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's the best thing. When your name makes people smile, I uh, I do have this thing quickly. Um, people always ask, what's your last name? And I'll say skank, and they're like, it says shank. And I'm like, you go to school? How'd you go to school? <laughs> they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, spell school for me. And they're like, S C A. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Extra, the podcast where I, Andrew Michael Harris, talk about anything and everything. Uh, I'm here with Hagen Shank. Uh, Hagen recently (laughs) completed the uh, 4x4x48 challenge this past weekend. Uh, It's a uh, challenge set by David Goggins. If you don't know David Goggins is, uh, you definitely should. I'll put a link below uh, to David Goggins and, you know, what he does. But Hagen actually did something ex- extraordinary. On his 11th leg, he also uh, uh, gave me a call, and we had a, uh, a conversation um, that uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and play for you guys really quickly. Well, I can't look like that because I'm going to make an excuse or every excuse I can not to put in the work to change. And I don't give a fuck if you're so overweight, but you're in the gym every single day. I see people that are like morbidly obese and I see them in the gym and they, and I all see them for like a year and they've maybe only lost like 25 pounds. You know how much more weight they've lost than other people saying I'm body confident, I'm body positive? <laughs> 25 fucking pounds more. Yep. Maybe they have the same fucking condition as you, and they're not getting results fast as they want, but know what they are? They're mentally actually happy with themselves because they're getting their ass up, they're getting their gym clothes on, they're going and doing it. While you're just saying, I'm happy with what you know I'm given and I don't need a change for anyone. Well- All right, so Hagen. I just played the clip uh, where you called me on your 11th leg and uh, we got into the conversation about being uh, body confident. You were praising people who are overweight and they still get up and they go to the gym and they strive for, you know, something more. Um, not a lot of people do that. And I think that's really cool, uh, you know, that you that you said that. And... Uh, uh, you know, it's just really important to spread love in, in different uh, spaces. Um, I know that you uh, personally have an awesome story. If you want to touch on some of that, be my guest. Uh, this is Hagen, everybody. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. Good to be here. Thank you again for uh, having me on. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, just the love and feedback that you've given me over this weekend has been uh, amazing, especially uh, to have someone from the past kind of come out of nowhere and uh, mm-hmm. definitely say the things that you've said of like re-inspiring you and, you know, getting back to spreading love in different spaces. Everyone always has like a starting point or a restarting point because life is every day. And you can't really take like a a low time and think this is going to be the rest of my life. This is going to be the thing that like has set the course and it's never going to change from here. I mean, personally, ups and downs are probably a blessing in disguise for a lot of people because, you know, you face adversity and the greatest leaps and bounds in most people's lives come from the lowest points. So... Me personally, <clears throat> getting on this journey, um, I should say getting re-acclimated to start this journey again is probably from my lowest point. And uh, all I can say is it's it's good to be back. It's good to feel alive again. And uh, just, just taking what needs to be reinserted in everyone's life is basically there is no end game for having a downtime. The only 
thing that everyone has to focus on is striving for the next thing, striving for what makes you feel better from inside and out. Because if you're not happy inside, you know, it's hard to shape from the outside in. Right. So what was something that you had to do? Why did you choose uh, uh, fitness uh, instead of like another outlet uh, to to kind of like reimmerse yourself? Well, I can say luckily enough, um, fitness has been the backbone of pretty much my whole life drawing back to when I was a little kid. My dad used to be a bodybuilder. So some of my fondest memories of thinking, God, my dad's an insane person, would be hearing him like yell and scream from the basement, you know, at like the early hours of the morning, like some rabid animal, you know. It's like fuck ah, ah and he, he was one of the OG OG Spider Men. Yes, yes. Uh, little little backstory. He was one of the first live action. Um, uh, comic book portrayals of Spider-Man and Captain America. So before the hype about all the movies and everything and the comic books were first starting out, you would go and see your favorite action heroes live. And uh, my dad was one of the first people to dress up in the Spidey costume. And uh, it's actually his Spider-Man costume, funny enough, was actually bought at auction and sold to a memorabilia house. I believe it's in Minnesota. So you can go and see it. It's, it's a stuffed costume now, embodying <laughs> my father as the OG Spider-Man from the 70s. So if you're ever out there, look it up. You'll see Tom Skank, uh, you know, what he was, you know, the young Peter Parker. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I keep, and forgive me, I keep uh, mispronouncing your, your last no, name. It's a, it's it's fun, <laughs> but uh, I <laughs> um, so touch on a little bit as to um, you know what the four by four by forty eight is. I mean, I've told people it's this thing where you know, like you're supposed to be walking or running for four hours. Uh, for, I mean, <laughs> for four miles every four hours for yeah. forty eight hours total. But you yeah. did a little something different with it, um, and uh, and how do you uh, you know find this challenge? Are you do you follow David Goggins or? So, kind of Goggins was thrown into my life. Like I said, everyone has their ups and downs, and you know you prosper from the low times. I've struggled a lot with alcohol, and one of the low times that I was able to rip out of, someone actually gave me his book, uh, "Can't Hurt Me." I definitely do recommend it if anyone is looking for an inspiring book of change and perseverance. Definitely uh, kind of dive in there. But uh, he kind of came in as this character of truthfulness of, you know, the gritty, dirty shit you have to go through by yourself in the times alone that really build the character in the dark room. And... Um, Building the character better. in the dark room. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So so kind of putting that into perspective, I was like, man, I've I've walked through many of these long, dark hallways, you know, like feeling around for an exit. And uh, so at that point I read the book and I completely was enthralled in this mindset of man, if that is some of the stuff this one person can go through and become this hardened, badass motherfucker, then let me at least get a little, like, taste of it. Yeah, now, and you don't so, have to go into, like, uh, super details, but, um, you know, what was that time frame of uh, when you were down? Because some people think, you know, you just be down, and it's like, you know, <laughs> snap like, your <laughs> you snap your fingers and you get right back up and, you know, it's like, ah, oh, push and, you know, um, yeah, you have to come to a point where you decide, but, uh, I don't think people, a lot of people don't understand that, uh, it, it can actually be a while that you're down. So how long, how long were you down for? Oh yeah. Um, I, I was feeling probably for the last three years it was it was very much the ups and downs of looking around for that 
exit door until you find that little uh, turn of the handle and you hear the and that one's open. And uh, it was a struggle, but you kind of break yourself down to a point where you finally come to grips with there's there's no more left of not giving. And no more left of not giving. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not giving any more into the bad, the stupid. And so once that tank is empty, you've kind of reached all of your reserves of like all the things that you can accomplish because you've ran out of all the things that you shouldn't be doing. And that was the one thing for me where I'm like, man, I can't fuck up anymore, I believe, personally. So I guess now it's time to, you know, take the reins and really just jump into this lifestyle of, okay, here's the other side of the moon. Essentially, my dark side of the moon is the tough, the gritty, the really, like, okay, there's nothing going to be a thing that's going to tell me I can't or a person who says I can't because some of the biggest people who have motivated me have also been the people who have told me, don't worry, take a break, rest, you're doing too much. And it's kind of funny, that's why the person who you find and meet in the dark room is the person who you can't see because you just know who it is. You recognize them without even seeing it because you're comfortable when you see something. Now, as it's a person... Familiar, who is the person in the dark room? Is it it's, yourself? It, it is. It's it's the person who you don't ever see because that person you've kept in the shadows for so long because it's the person that has you know been in longing because all of the easy things that come in life you're so willing to accept. Your brain naturally goes to the comfy, cozy route like, oh, you don't want to be cold, grab a jacket. Oh, you're sore, sit down oh, you're tired, take a nap. And there's all these things where it's like you don't have to do that. You can always give a little bit more. You can push a little bit more. You can take that inch instead of just saying, like, hey, I need to, I need to calm down. I mean, we all have a little bit more to give, but it's like, do we want it? Because it's not going to be comfortable. Can we do it? Yes. But it's just kind of one of those things. That's who I met in the dark room, and everyone has that person. So, Everyone's going to find it if you want it. Yeah. Uh, finding that person, finding yourself. So when you got out of that dark room and, uh, uh, you know, I guess when you go into the dark room, there's a door on the other side. That gotta gets find you to it, another. Though. Yeah. It's just hard to find. Yeah. So uh, how do you go from the dark room to finding David Goggins book and deciding to do this challenge. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's where it gets exciting because once you, All right, once let's you go, do, it's I mean, exciting. Yeah. I was already it's excited. Fucking, hanging. It's riveting, man. You, 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 you finally <laughs> see who is that person on the other side. Cause you open that door and then it's like, damn, it illuminates and you see that face for the first time and it's you. But yeah. it's just the more advanced, powerful, you know, aware you. And it's crazy because when you look that person in the face, you just feel unstoppable. And you finally know that all the things that were hard or difficult, you now kind of take on as a little game. I believe that we were even talking on our um, phone call about how I persevere through things. I take everything as a little game, as a little challenge, like a little kid, and get excited about it. Like, they're the little things, the little baby steps where it's like, oh, I can do this. I'm going to do it better than I think I'm going to do it. So getting through with David Goggins and having that person be the one to inspire me, it really took off as I'm going to do everything I can to challenge myself every single day. And especially in the fitness realm, there's there's so many different outlets where you can challenge yourself because there's so many different types of athletics where most people don't even touch on. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're a person who's comfortable with going to the gym and lifting, you're going to be completely thrown off. If I walk up to you and say, it's like, oh, you go to the gym seven days a week, you don't really take a break, okay, you must be really in shape. All right, let's go fucking swim for two hours. 
and be like, oh, God, I would, I would never swim. I'm like, oh, you're really in shape. You go to the gym seven days a week. Why not? And you're like, well, the, well I, I, I don't do cardio. Well, it's like, but you're really in shape. It's kind of all these different things, like all these different balances of what's going to be the most, you know, difficult for me. And so I did, unfortunately, get injured running because I kind of just became a maniac. I was like, I'm going to run the, these 8 miles, then I'm going to run these 12 miles, then I'm going to run these 16, and next thing I knew, I ran 100 miles in a week, and I kind of like blew out my calf, and I was like, well, that sucks, but the last thing I'm going to do is stop. So, <laughs> so how long was that recovery from that? Um, it's been about a month and a half, and uh, and then you did you know, this. <laughs> What? And then you did this? Yeah, it, it was finally like I'm feeling good. I got the got back on my feet and I can walk pretty stable without a limp. All right, let's fuck it up. I, I guess you didn't um, blow out your calf. I, I guess what? you didn't blow out your calf during this challenge, right? Um, I don't know yet. I, I got an air <laughs> splint on. I got an ace bandage up. I got ice packs. I have a, uh, you know, my whole body is kind of banged as shit, but. You know, and we'll figure it out, but it's all good. You still wake up and you do what you got to do. But no, I'm, uh, I, to be, to be the most nasty, the craziest thing was I, ha I had a blister on the bottom of my foot, probably the size of, like, your AirPod case. Mm -hmm. And on the last, I'm not even fucking with you, on the last 100 feet of the 12th leg, that shit just blew up on my wow. foot. <laughs> it felt like I was <laughs> walking in water. <laughs> wild and uh yeah uh no but my whole like skeletal structure from the torso down is pretty uncomfortable but oh well that's why they made pools right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so getting into Hello? the pools uh how I, I i read on another podcast some stats of you in the pool and then you had actually on your uh, Facebooks and Instagram stories during your challenge when you were swimming, you had actually posted like videos where uh, you had the camera down and you sped it up and it went through like three or four times of you just continually s swimming in the pool. And yeah. so it was, I mean, I, I, I believed you, but you know, when you see something like that, it's, it brings it to, to another really? level i mean like do, has anyone else had that reaction um i mean a lot of people have seen swimming as more of like a simple thing swimming actually was the most taxing part of the 4 by 4 by 48 i have to say because it's the whole cardiovascular system in shock I mean we're humans we're not meant to be submerged in water most of the time right but uh throughout the swims it's it's so much more of a mental game I'm outside now I apologize for these bikers it's <laughs> that's okay you're in uh you're in Philly right I'm in Harrisburg 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 okay yeah I'm sitting up on a roof right now so Harrisburg PA Oh yeah, Harrisburg, right. Pennsylvania, the capital. <laughs> All right. But um, no. Getting back to the the swimming, it 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 is kind of crazy to think about. Like you brought up some of the stats. Uh, swimming straight for a mile, um, is actually one of the beginning legs to a triathlon, and then running a 5K is also one of the portions of it. So unknowingly, we spoke about this. I was actually doing three or two thirds of a triathlon during the four by forty-eight as my workouts. Unknowingly, I just happened to include a twenty-pound incline walk. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now tell uh, tell people who who don't know, you know, the different exercises that you did. Tell people what you did on each leg. Yeah. So, if, if you can remember all of it, I know I know oh, yeah. some is like divided up and like, but divided up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the four by forty, four by four by forty eight itself is supposed to be the the running of four miles every four hours. So the lack of sleep, the constant like little rest, and uh, just kind of 
keeping you mentally strained beyond and on top of the physical strenuous just output. Um, so what I wanted to do was I said, well, I don't want to really run it because I'm naturally a runner. That that would be fun and too easy. Um, so I decided to do a 50-pound rucksack. Um, so I put a 50-pound kettlebell, which is, if you don't know, it looks like a metal sphere with a handle on it. And so unlike a rice bag, which is cozy and you can stuff it every, any which way, no, that motherfucker has a dead center of gravity and pulls you exactly back. So if you're going to go uphill, sideways, or anything, it really jolts the body. So each one of those, I did a complete 36 miles over 36 the two days. 36 miles? 36 miles of walking with that on my back. Um, and, and you had, other, um, you had like, uh, like welts on your back from it. Uh, so the first three legs were pretty much trial and error and the trial, trial and error came. Error? What? Yeah, no, go ahead. I was just asking, what uh, do you mean by trial and error? So the trial and error was, I assumed what I was putting around the kettlebell would work which was one towel, one towel like tucked into my rear waistband, and that would be good with the backpack padding. I was so fucking wrong. Um, that thing just like whatever, like my coccyx or whatever it is on the lower spine, it just like sat there and teetered back and forth since there wasn't enough padding. So every step essentially it's just dragging my clothes back and forth, back and forth, and I didn't have any towels on my shoulders yet. I didn't have any towels on my front chest yet. That really helps uh, help balance the weight out from the shoulders to uh, the uh, lats. And so I was basically thumbs up, pushing forward, carrying this with my arms and shoulders to like alleviate my spine getting attacked by this 45-pound kettlebell. <laughs> And then I thought one more towel would help. That didn't help. And then by the third leg, it's the 7 a.m. Um, walk. So without sleep, I'm having to like you know pretty much think on the go. Like how can I keep going with balancing this and then the weight? So by the fourth leg, which was uh, 3 p.m. on Saturday, I finally figured it out where I have a towel across my chest pulling forward to use as handles. I have a fanny pack across my abdomen that pulls it in tight that I keep my snacks in. And then Man. I have plastic wrap under my hoodie and then a towel on top of the plastic wrap with two towels in the bag. And it is still pushing through and pressing against my spine like no one's business. But um, yeah, so I did that Real quick, what kind of just, snacks did you have? Uh, so just pretty much like bananas. And uh, then I also had a dark cherry, um, raisin, cashew, almond nut blend. That's pretty much what I ate throughout. I wanted to kind of what just What do you stay. mean a nut blend? Are you yeah. like you're you blending up nut, nuts and putting them in milk or something or like no what, no no how does like that a work? blend just like a medley oh 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 of like yeah, food like okay gotcha milk. gotcha I thought you're like <laughs> he's got like the liquid the liquid nuts my, going, my camel man. pack like, is what? just all that <laughs> <laughs> that's wild man that's wild yeah so all right so you oh. so 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 you're supplied with food you figured out you know uh, how you need to stabilize yourself better. Uh, you're getting sore. You're getting tired. Oh uh, yeah. What 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 leg are we on now? So, by the fourth leg, I pretty much had that figured out. The back's kind of killing. So the fifth leg, which was the hold on, eleven to three three the seven o'clock. Hold on. Oh the eleven to three. Yeah, the three o'clock leg which was the fifth leg, I believe, on Saturday, which was the first time I went to the gym. So to switch it up, I wanted to see how the swimming went. But instead of, you know, swimming all uh, for the miles, which would be completely, 
you know, wiping. Uh, I wanted to stick with some weighted uh, walking, so I go on the treadmill. I put the treadmill all the way up to the highest incline, and then I carry two 10-pound weights in each one of my hands, and then I walk two miles like that straight. And so I'm going about like 16 minutes a mile on that. And I'm tell telling you, my hip flexors were not the best after that. And then to finalize getting through the third mile, I put it down and then I run, I run a seven-minute mile. And then for my cool down is then when I enter the pool and swim a mile straight without stopping. So I give myself maybe three minutes to get from the treadmill into my Speedo and into the pool. So wow. I, I try and keep my heart rate elevated because when I you're think in it that... it was definitely elevated. <laughs> Probably yeah. more so than running, Hagen. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 pretty, that's pretty insane. So um, uh, before we, we get back into like the rest of the legs here, uh, you actually... Um, like you know you're getting tired here but it's not oh, just yeah. that it's 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 hard to sleep because your schedule's off and you're you're like up at 3 a.m. oh yeah i mean i i had a rough week going into it and the one thing i was concerned about was even getting the right amount of rest before friday and so thursday night i went to sleep really early thinking that I was going to wake, you know, not set my alarm, have a good, like, sleep. No, my my asshole body wakes me up at fucking 3.26 in the morning on Friday morning. And so I was up from 3.26 a.m. until the first leg. And then the depriving yourself of sleep is just continuous for 48 hours, where I didn't have more than an hour and 45 minutes rest at a time and I only took four blocks of that in those 48 hours. <laughs> and then, so, so when, when you go to sleep, you know, it, it's got to be hard for you to wake up because w when you actually did go to sleep and, and when you, when you like hit the hay, was it, you know, instantly you were passed out because you finally, your body's like, I finally get the chance to, to sleep or is it no? Ah. Uh. I mean, I, I wish it was that simple where it's like I could have – I found myself like napping randomly more like a, like a not out than I did when I fell asleep because it was like I was planning to go to sleep. It was almost like, okay, body, get ready to sleep and calm down. And then once you kind of like get all your gear off and everything, you're almost kind of like – still kind of awake because you're just getting off an exercise so you have to lower your heartbeat you have to chill and then go to sleep but you don't realize is when you take all that time to rest and finally get yourself at this like normalized heartbeat you've wasted 30 minutes so wow. the time that you have until you have to start again is now shortened by the cool down time that it takes me to even get into a mode of rest. Yeah, so, so it's like as soon as you get into a resting state, I gave myself like, 15 oh, minutes nope, when sorry. I got up. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and it was definitely hard on the uh Sunday morning. Um definitely the Now you you went into this on Friday. I went into this on so it or Saturday the whole morning. I started on the West Coast at 8 p.m. So they had a little bit more of like a normalized start time for an event. Us East Coasters are fucked because we have to start at 11 p.m. And so if you're like thinking you're going to have a normalized day, for me, I'm in bed by 10.15, so I'm already past Betty by time by the time my start <laughs> is <laughs> ready to go. And yeah, it, it was... 11 a.m., 3 a.m., uh, 7 a.m., and then 11 a.m., 3 p.m., and so on. So I went all the way up until Sunday at 11 p.m. 
and that whole day during Sunday, it was it was really a blur because I did take two of the legs because the gym wasn't open. I only had a small short window because here in Pennsylvania, we don't have long extended gym hours. It's very much, you know, the uh, everyone rests on Sunday. Not not right. not this guy. Not this guy. Uh, <laughs> so what do you, what do you substitute? With um, on Sunday, you know, just like a run or, or or walk or, well, just something moving. Um, just just something. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big believer in uh, get out of bed, make your bed, always make your bed. It kind of gives structure to the day. But I get up and I immediately put on meditative style music, and I'll bust out a small body workout. I have a pull up bar, so I I try and do. The like sets of what 100. So I'll do 100 body weight squats and then I'll do 25 push ups with intervals of 10 pull ups to 15 leg raises. So it's 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, and then I'll do four sets of 25 curl um, cycle sit ups. So it's pretty much 100 there, 100 there, 100 there, and 100 there. Mm-hmm. And that's just. The everyday morning body workout so it kind of wakes up your body and I haven't been doing my yoga like I should but oh well I had to <laughs> <fish to> fry <laughs> so you get to the uh, uh, like your 10th leg but then on the 11th yeah. leg you had to explain why you decided to finish up with the uh, with the kettlebells that you started with I think you said you did the kettlebells on the on the first and second leg, um, in the in the rucksack, right, and then the last well, two you you did the same. Why is that? Well, I wanted to finish up with the uh, rucksack because it pretty much gives the homage to like if I'm gonna start hard, I'm gonna finish harder. Because at the end, there there was no like, oh yeah, I was told by multiple people just you know just you you deserve it. Just walk the last four miles. Or it's like, don't worry, you you're you've already done enough. You can just go on a, like a light jog for the last four. And I really wanted to give myself the credit of any time that I was out there doing the four miles, it was exactly how I set it in my head before I even went out there. Because when you set a goal, you have to accomplish it, or it's gonna be that itch you can't scratch. If you don't accomplish it, and it's always there, it's always going to be on your mind that you set it and didn't complete it. And especially in an event like this when it's a timed event, there is no, hey, let me just try it again. Hey, let me redo it. If you don't do it, you didn't do it, and then it's set in stone. So I wanted those last two legs to be the hardest and the most difficult, and I think I told you that I had one secret goal for what I wanted the last leg of this to be. I was right. checking all my times, and my average time was about 17 minutes and 30 seconds per mile every mile for the uh, four-mile rucksack walks. So I told myself that I And keep in mind, I would guys, these are 45-pound these and 50-pound rucksack walks. These are not just, you know, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's, it's funny. It, you, can, you can get into, into talking about something and telling something, and then people just, you know, they, yeah. they forget. So, you know, 45-pound yeah. and 50-pound rucksack walks, it's and that's not just, just the, like... that's just the weight, not all yeah. the gear I'm carrying as well, the water bottle, the food. And so, it's I mean, cold, it up, you're bundled but... up. So, yeah, um, the last one, I wanted not to go into the week. Since this is a weekend challenge and I started on Friday and I wanted to keep it 48 hours, I told myself I would complete it with an under 15-minute mile pace to get all four miles done before it hit midnight onto Monday. And so... I mean, if if you ever have seen someone working out and they're grunting and yelling, I was I was the epitome of a fucking wild animal when I was walking around Harrisburg. I at you know 11:30, I'm sitting there going, ah, like yelling, 
<laughs> and, you know, I'm the only one out there, and it's like a cool Sunday night. And then you just see this crazy man that people have... I've done four different routes, so everyone's probably seen me at least four times <laughs> in the city. And so if anyone was out... Like an alert out good, for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my buddy was probably like, who's this insane guy walking around with his backpack? Because I have these bright orange shoes on most of the time. They match my hat. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And so it's like, if I'm not a beacon already by being the, this crazy guy in a backpack, I'm literally howling, screaming, being like, you motherfucker, you got it. And so it's like, I'm on the phone with my dad the whole time, who's like, over the moon proud of me at this point. He's just sitting there like, you got it, you got it. I'm like, damn right. And it's kind of one of these things where my body is shot, my mind is screwed like I, I'm just like starting to tell myself like all right you know don't think about it just left foot right foot left foot right foot and for I'm gonna say a majority of the pace I kept it around 13 minutes the whole time and I would like break myself okay I see a quarter of the mile left and I'll slow down and then revamp for the last one. I think I finished with my average pace when I ended it all. I was at about 12 minutes and 13 seconds with all that at the last one. Wow, that's I was, really Whoo! impressive. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really impressive. Um, so you get to this point, and you're, like, hyping yourself up, and you're like a wild man of Harrisburg, PA, yeah. Freaking scaring everybody. Cops weren't called, all the which is good. But <laughs> um, there was uh, this thing where David Goggins was uh, supposed to like appear on Instagram every four hours or something like Never. that. And yeah, and I, I saw people's comments and he, you know, he never did it. It's, you know, I don't know if. Uh, you know, I don't know what happened with that. Do, does anyone or? Well, unfortunately, I I even was, I I'm not gonna lie. Like probably by the seventh leg, I didn't see any videos, and so I went on Google. I'm like, where is David Goggins? <laughs> <laughs> Straight up ass. I was like, where is David Goggins? And then my buddy, who also was a big supporter of me doing this, he he reached out to me and he's like, yo, he finally posted. And I'm uh -huh. like, oh, I bet he's doing some savage thing. I get on, and unfortunately, all I see is him doing jumping jacks in a gym for 40 minutes. That's that's his leg of it. Oh, so he, <laughs> so he's I'm, like hyping people up by giving them this maybe this expectation of like a motivation, motivational speech or something. Uh -huh. Is that and, and then he just like ghosts everybody with know. this. I, yeah, and he's I doing have, jumping jacks. Like I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm getting it with you guys. <laughs> I mean, getting... one video out of twelve segments, and it's not like at least do something savage when you pop up. You know, like if you're gonna pop up once, I want to see you doing like hundred bell, hundred pound kettlebell swings for fucking. 45 minutes straight, you Yo. know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I want to see some some insane thing, like... And, and, I, and I think it's just because there was just so much hype built around the fact that he would be appearing every, every uh, you know, every four hours. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was kind of disheartening, especially because I know I'm doing it, and being a person who's read his book, being a person who's followed a lot of, like, the inspiration stuff, even when I'm, like, having tough days and, you know, I feel pretty broken and it's like I have my own kind of gears that I need to turn, mm -hmm. I will watch some motivational videos of, like, you know, him on runs or him on talks or all of this where it's just, like, callousing the mind and, like, telling yourself... And then I'm like, finally, here's that David Goggins challenge that I'm going to fucking kill. I'm going to do it myself and all of this. All right, cool. I'm going to do it along with him. And it was almost like getting disappointed every single side of the leg. But then I stopped thinking about it probably on the fourth one where I was like, well, if he's not going to show up, then 
I thought about what Joe Rogan says in his thing. It's like if mm-hmm. someone was starting a movie of your life and you have to be the superhero in your movie and they start taping now, what are you doing? And so I made it known that it's like every start of the leg, I was going to be my own personal superhero. And so when I woke up and I got ready, you know, there, there's like balls to the wall adrenaline because I don't have anyone. I live alone. Like, there's no one sitting there like, hey, can you got it rubbing me on the back. Like, yeah, you can do this. And then, like, the motivational speaker that you're supposed to be sitting <laughs> just ain't showing up either. <laughs> He's ghosting you, too. So, so with, with that like, being said, man, like, like, do you think in – because, you know, I mean, you know, David Goggins, like, maybe it was a test. Yeah, like... You think maybe who, it was a test? Like, who's actually going to keep going if they don't yeah. see him? Yeah. And that's that's what I, like, muttered over to. I was like, if he's not there, how many, how many souls is he taking? Because that's his thing. Like, taking souls is one of the things where it's like, he'll fuck with you up until, like, you're just scared enough of the guy that you won't even do it. And yeah. maybe he's doing the reverse psychology of he's showing, he's not showing up so many times that you're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. And so... <laughs> and he's doing it. It's just, it, it, it doesn't mean that because you don't see him until the seventh leg doing it, that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean he wasn't doing it, you know? R- right? But yeah, that yeah, that's a really good point, especially because what's the easiest way to break someone's willpower if you're their inspiration? Not show up, not give them support. Especially all these people that are wanting to be, you know, in a place where it's like I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna push myself past my limit. But most people need that pat on the back. A lot of people do need that what we have in the new age um, participation medal. Right. And then you, know, and, and you David showed Goggins, up. Yeah. He's, he's all yeah. about taking that away. Yeah. yeah. So it's like people were looking for that so they could join in the live video and be like, hey, I signed in when he was live. Well, <clears throat> I didn't sign in when he went live. I was already, I was done with it. I was like, this fucking guy, like my buddy showed me <laughs> after the fact. You know, I still have the utmost respect for him, but I was just like, Damn. Oh, so your friend showed you after the after. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I got you. like I I didn't even know he went because I said like on the fourth leg I just stopped looking. I was like, it's if he's not gonna be there, I'm still gonna be there. I'm still gonna do it because a lot of people also ask like, what did you get out of this? What did you do this for? And I was like, what do you do? What does anyone do anything for? It's the <laughs> self reward of saying you did something. And you completed it. Yeah. But me wanting to do it by myself and solely by myself was to set standards for myself that I didn't think I was going to complete it. Because at the beginning, when I put that goddamn weight in that bag, mm-hmm. it felt like the heaviest thing on earth. And I was telling myself, all the voices were just shooting off, firing, like, you're really going to carry this thing? <clears throat> Maybe 12 times? I'm like... <clears throat> and I'm coming off an injury where walking four miles, I'm probably going to say I went on a two-and-a-half-mile nature preserve walk maybe two-and-a-half weeks ago. And halfway through that walk, I started crying because my, my – no joke, my calf felt like it was going to explode out of the fucking side of my leg. Wow. And then a week later was when I saw the challenge, and I was like, okay – and so what I did for the next fucking week was every day I stretched my leg for probably upwards of two hours a day. I just opened it up, did whatever I could because I said, I'm going to do this challenge. And my, my friend was like, you're crazy. You can't even walk right now. I was like, I'm going to do it. And again, there's, there's no rhyme or reason why I did it or who I did it for. It was just, I'm going to do it because I have to do it. Like that itch you can't scratch, you have to do it type of thing. So you <laughs> finished it, and you're freaking after you You are, you know, swimming and carrying 
kettlebells in your rucksack and you got blisters uh your <laughs> back is blisters. bruised exploding <laughs> blisters your back is bruised um i think i already said calluses yeah i mean like other than that like you're just calluses you know it's like is like one thing but ex- exploding uh yeah uh, you know blisters you know that that are going to turn into calluses or are, are, are oh yeah another... i mean i was just gonna say like in the the last thing i needed is for anyone to see my feet i don't think i, I think i have like out of 10 toes i think i probably have about four toenails <laughs> what you lost all those toenails <laughs> And then the ones that are still there, they're like just purple and blue. God. Yeah, like fun. Um, throughout the throughout throughout the whole thing, I changed shoes four times. God, what uh, what kind of shoes did you start with? So I started with um, like Nike, Nike, Nike free runs. They're more my like classic trail runners, and then I. St- went to um the nike freeze but they're more of the they were like my everyday walking shoes but i put some dr shoals in them <laughs> mm-hmm. um and then the next ones i did were my nike fly knits which were the ones that fucked me up because i normally do those on longer runs they're a little bit looser but have a lot of ventilation they felt great until after I took them off and I had so much weight on the balls of my feet, they were the ones that really rubbed everything. So I didn't feel the pain of them until after I woke up from one of my naps. And next thing I know, I wake up from the bed and I feel like I stepped on like 5,000 Legos. And- <laughs> yeah. I mean, the one Lego is like, is already, yeah. you know, that'll, that'll already set you back. <laughs> That's crazy, and so man. yeah, I definitely let up a holler. I was like, "No way!" Yeah. And it's it's probably literally half half dollar size, and I'm like, "This is not good." I got like eight more or like seven more of these things to go. So you're and, so uh, you're sitting on a on a, a rooftop right now in the middle yep. of the city, but yeah. um, uh, you're from uh, you're from Pennsylvania, but you're from like a smaller town, right? So. I did my teenage years here in PA. I okay. grew up um, in Lancaster from about like 11 till 18 okay. or about 10. I don't know. I can't really remember the year. But yeah. um, then before that, I was in Connecticut. And then before that, I was born in Colorado. Heard, heard. Now, what do you yeah. like about that contrast of, you know, city, country vibe? So the biggest thing that is the most fun is just seeing how different it is, especially coming from the country to the city and then coming back to the country. Mm. You kind of gain this understanding of, I mean, some people might hate me for this, but the small town mentality is alive and well in the biggest city Mm -hmm. in New York. It's not just Manhattan is a place, Brooklyn's a place, Queens is a place, the Bronx is a place. All of these different areas have their own communities and small, thriving inlets of working people together. And it was the funniest thing because I left the big city to get away from that of like not walking outside and feeling like I know everyone to then being ingested in the city of... If you don't, if you live on like I was on 145th and Broadway, but if mm-hmm. you don't go below 145 and only go up to 157th, everyone knows each other. Right. It's their community, and then that's respectable to say about every single part where the small town vibe never really leaves. You just have much more, pe- many more people. Yeah. And so to come back and then see that from the small town to the big city to the small town perspective again, it, it, it it's wild to see how, I don't know, homey everyone can make it. For me, I've moved so many times that it's like I became uncomfortable in the city as soon as I felt like I started to know people. And so I moved. Mm-hmm. And that's when I went to California. 
Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> nice, man. Um, so uh, I, I, I feel like you have this mentality that is so sought after like people people love to see it they love to listen to it they love to hear about it um i was talking uh uh to somebody about um uh like motivational porn yeah you know <laughs> you know what i'm talking about like where people just spew this you know like get up and go and, and yada 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 but like you it's like genuine and it's you know you're just Hagen yeah like you don't have to try you know you just are has anybody ever like expressed that so I I can say fortunately one of the coolest things that someone ever said to me when I was growing up was, you're the coolest weird kid I've ever met. <laughs> and I think that was the biggest compliment ever. Because I've always, like you said, I've always been who I am, and everyone has given me respect for it. Like, they'll bring me along just because I didn't care. I was the person who had the huge curly mustache wearing a three-piece suit every single day. Hagen, why are you dressed like that? This is what I find comfortable. I didn't own a pair of sweatpants. Like, I didn't own shorts. I had slacks and blazers in the middle of the summer, and people thought I was insane. <laughs> but they would want to know why, and were, in, were, were intrigued why I was doing these things, and it's like, that's what I wanted to do on that given day. And that's kind of just like ever since high school it's like I was I was I'm color deficient so it's like I can see like primary colors but then as soon as you get into like hues and different values of it the shades and tones I kind of lose it right yeah so there is no turquoise it's just like yeah green like, and dark blue <laughs> <There's> the... <laughs> it's, it's it's very simple I mean my wardrobe consists of navy gray maroon black white and tan mm. and that's it but to express how much I got over colors in high school I used to wear the craziest neon skater punk shit just because if I can't see it I'm going to make everyone else know that it's like I don't care what I'm wearing and so it's like I was the kid who had bright neon laces with wild print hoodies right. just because I thought like this is going to help me rebel against being colorblind I'm going to wear every color every fucking day and is that something <laughs> you like express to people or like that you were doing it because you're colorblind or, or you it just knew that's a, why you were doing it and you, you acted it was more out. of an anti-bullying tactic because no. you know high school kids are mean as hell no. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so one of the things was always like hey, what color is this hey, what color is that da, da, da. or it's like they purposely screw up something that I knew I had to get mm -hmm. and it was kind of just like oh you're going to point out every fucking color on my shirt go ahead what color is this what color is this yeah so and I don't it's know like cool for, of... it's like cool for a minute like you know it's like a joke and then it just becomes like yeah okay, now you're an asshole <laughs> exactly <laughs> you, <know? laughs> so, you want to point out every single color go ahead you'll get tired before I will <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, just being unique and being kind of like who I've always thought I was hmm. always was kind of the way I thought I should be. And yeah. that's a trait that I got from my dad for sure. Hmm. He's always dressed in the, dressed to the nines, uh, bow ties for days type of guy. Right. Very much where whatever he's comfortable in, that's what he wears, but it's always flashy. Now for, you know, from the tail pins to the cufflinks to yeah. the tie clips, I mean, the tie bars, everything. I have an assortment of rings. I have an assortment of different earrings, you know. Like, I, in the last two months, just because I was like, I'm going to do whatever I want now, I've pierced my ears three times just with a 
like my I pulled out my buddy's Needle old or really? thing, his old name tag from the Marriott Hotel he used to work at, and I lit that shit with a lighter, stabbed no. it in the lemon, and then I just go pop, and then I take it out and I put an earring in. <laughs> Sanitary, nah. But did I definitely, want to do it? Did I want to have some earrings? in? yeah, definitely so, been through worse pain. You know, de you've definitely been through worse pain. <laughs> and <laughs> I have to say, to be honest, when I did it, I I thought it, it was a joke how much it didn't hurt. And I, it's like I even tested it. I like wiggled it around. I'm like, I don't feel shit. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's wild. Like one dude. time, uh, I was dared um, <laughs> pierce my nipple, and I was like, "That's it." I w I just went. <laughs> no just, like, way. Right through, you know, Facebook with it. Yeah, I just like pierced it right through the head. I was like, "Yeah, that's it." <laughs> uh, do you have any tattoos? I don't. No. Um, that no, that's that's a question I always get asked, especially when I I do like my uh, long sleeve shirts. And people always think I'm hiding some sleeves under my sleeves. Mm -hmm. Roll them bad boys up, I'm clean. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, I just never found the right tattoo to get. Um, so it's not that you never wanted one. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm there, cool with people not having tattoos. I, I just yeah. have one. and But, you know, I have an idea of what else I want. But I've literally had this one for years. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you could only have that one until yeah, you, and it's uh, fine. You're dead. <laughs> yeah, that's good. There there's this uh, one quote that has been like floating around in my head mm. a lot. And it's never blame yourself for the madness that made you a warrior. Never blame and, yourself for the madness that made you a warrior. Yeah. Wow. So it kind of really spoke volumes to me when I heard it. And it's like written by this poet that she's a young girl, but like her, her literature has just blown up. I can't remember the name. So type that in and credit that person. We got to But um, sure, yeah, sure. it's uh, literally been something that has always been ringing in my head for the last like month and a half when I read it because all of like the roller coasters you go through life there it's the madness that constantly you know puts you in check of like this is bad but you can get better and through all the bad once you get better you gain an understanding you gain a skill set you didn't have before then and you know it kind of just made me really feel humble about, like, all the bullshit. I mean, a lot that was self-inflicted through addiction, but also what brings in. Because, you know, the whole saying, misery loves company, but until you eject that company away, you're only left with yourself to look back and be like, okay, from what that was, I need to take myself personally here. So that quote kind of just rang in my head. Yeah, it's 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 uh there's a quote in the acting world that it's like actors are literally just, you know, their job is to hold up a mirror from the stage or from the set, from the movie whatever back to the world so they can yeah, look at it and see themselves. So that's basically what you're doing. Holding mm -hmm. up a mirror ah. to the world in your own way. 100%. Yeah, it's really cool. Um Oof. So let's finish this up here. Uh, I know it's getting dark where you are. Um, any good. advice you want to give to the people out there listening to you? You know, to, like what um, yeah. you've you've already given them so much. You know, like you've already you've already you've told your story. You've given them wealth information and everything. I just don't want it. You know, uh, things to be to be left unsaid. I mean. Like, I, I'll, I'll leave it like this. One of the things that I never was able to do growing up or through my adult years, like my 20s, was openly show emotion. And in the last 
three months, four months when this whole transition's really like touched a nerve in my life. It was, I was able to openly cry for the first time and really see and feel all of what you have that most people are scared to admit that's going on, scared to really bring to light what's truly bothering you, what's truly keeping you confined and why you're not doing something or why you feel a certain way because we all have these internal barriers and internal like straps that you know you can feel like you're so caught up in and I feel like the biggest thing is just opening up to emotion and you'll see how slowly but vividly they start unbounding you and slipping off you and once you start feeling everything that you've kept inside the limits just drop away because you fully feel rejuvenated there's nothing pulling you back anymore and I know so many people deal with depression fighting for like social like acceptance wanting to feel fit in even though we hide behind like computer screens nowadays but if you do have anything, just find it in yourself to, like, understand. Just got to love you. And that's why I'm here today. I finally found a way to slip through and touch my own inner feeling that I never had before. And the reason why I'm able to do what I'm doing right now and why I know my journey will never end until my soul's transcended is because I finally found what makes me tick. And I know everyone can. Truly. That's honestly, like, that's honestly beautiful, man. It, it re really and truly is. Um, uh, thanks for coming on, Hagen. Oh, dude, thank uh, you for having me. Hagen Skank. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that's the best thing. When your name makes people smile, I, uh, I do have this thing quickly. Um, people always ask, what's your last name? And I'll say Skank, and they're like, it says Shank. And I'm like, you go to school? How'd you go to school? <laughs> they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, spell school for me. And they're like, S-C-8. <gasps> and I'm like, hey. yeah, they spell school, <laughs> school, baby. And it's like, people light up. It always makes everyone's day because you still don't think about it. But it's just like, I know those little, yeah. little make someone smile every day. Yeah. And I can, I can attest to that by this morning, a uh, construction worker helped me with parking. Mm -hmm. He like put a comb behind my car. I go in, get him a cup of coffee in return. We didn't speak of any favors, but it's the little gestures like that. He gave me a cone, free parking. I'm going to pay $2 anyway. Get the man a coffee. Nice, Hagen. Give something to someone every day. Pay it forward. I love it, man. <laughs> well, thanks for being on here, Hagen. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, you can find... Hagen Skank at all I know is go on Instagram. That's all I know is go. Make sure uh, you hit up his profile. Let him know in the comments here and on his Instagram what uh, you know how you felt about his story, um, any takeaways from it, uh, and uh, uh, you know thank you guys for listening. And you've been listening to Extra with me andrew michael harris uh guest hagen skank and <laughs> we'll uh catch you next time <laughs> thank you again so much michael <laughs>